Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video and a deep freezing cold weather experiment. I parked my Tesla Model 3 at a supercharger for two days, obviously not blocking a spot. I pushed it off to the side, different part of the parking lot for two days to deep freeze. And we got down to minus 14 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 20 and below degrees Celsius. Um, and what I wanted to do was to get there during one of the coldest portions of the night, pull it to the supercharger, plug it in and see what happens. We all know batteries don't like to charge when they're deep frozen. So of course we know Tesla's will run a battery heater before they accept, uh, before they accept a charge. And in this video, we find out how long it takes and all of the cool, weird, creaky noises and stuff that happens. So let me walk you through the testing procedures. We'll go over to the supercharger and I'll show you exactly what happens. At the end of this video, I've prepared all of the charging logs. So you'll be able to see that. There's also a link in the description so you can print out uh, a Google Sheets of every minute basically of the charging session if you're curious for yourself. <laughs> So this is my 2019 Tesla Model 3 performance. It's been in countless videos. It's been a trusty companion and just a wonderful, reliable piece of machinery. Had some issues here and there. Those have pretty much been fixed and they've all been cosmetic. In terms of battery and motor performance, it's been wonderful. By the way, I just did a service mode video on this, checking the battery health, and it actually came back at 8%, which sounds dreadful. So I called up Tesla and asked them, what, what the heck's going on here? And they actually said, you know, I got tossed around a million times between different people, people telling me they don't know what a battery health check is. Finally, the right guy got on the app and he said, oh, there's actually a bug with the Tesla service mode where some cars don't read accurately. This one being one, because he did his own check and he says my high voltage systems, everything's working great on this car, nothing to be alarmed at at all. So in this video, we can know we have a pretty approved, good working high voltage system for this test that we're doing at the supercharger. Um, they said they're issuing a firmware update in quarter one, 2023, so that if other people are getting these weird health results back like I did, um, we'll run it again, let's just say in March or April, something like that after the update comes and we'll get better, hopefully more accurate results. Anyway, testing procedures. I parked this car at the Loveland, Colorado supercharger. It's a huge parking lot just to the side of the supercharger, not blocking any spaces. And what we did, you'll see in the video essentially, is I let it deep freeze for two days, got super cold. We plugged it in with the car indicating negative nine degrees Fahrenheit, the weather channel indicating negative 14. When we unplugged from the supercharger, actually just about 20 minutes later, it got down to minus 21 degrees Fahrenheit. That'll be for the next video. So let's go over to Loveland supercharger and see what happens. Word of warning before this video starts, some people will take this information and not fully understand it. They'll think electric cars don't charge in the cold. They'll think it takes over an hour to get any juice into your battery pack or anything like that. Couldn't be farther from the truth. In a Tesla, for those who don't own one, when you navigate to a supercharger on a long trip, it will automatically warm up the battery pack on the way to that charger. And then it will, um, of course, charge faster with a warmer battery pack. There is one exception to that though. There are a lot of people who live in cities and who don't have home charging, who might live close to a supercharger where the car sits outside and deep freezes. For those people, this is unfortunately a very relevant video. Let's go to the charger, see how long it takes for this thing to even start charging on a supercharger when it's frozen. Join me in the Model 3 now and you are frozen. My fingertips won't even bend right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for holding the camera, appreciate that. So um, let's see, 97 miles, 35%. The car is indicating minus nine, the weather channel, is indicating minus 14 windshield wipers not not really working <laughs> i don't want to run the heater um so I'll, i'm going to jump out i'm going to brush the snow off of here and i really want to i actually want to see do we have any regen at all oh my god look at how little power availability we have we have almost no power output or input available whatsoever wow i have never seen it that aggressive i don't want to be too harsh on the battery pack and i do want to get it into the charger before too long so Let's put it in park. Let me brush this off and let's try it out. Let's see how this thing goes. Maybe all these cold temperatures will let me force me to invest in some gloves. Wow, so we have, of course, the regen limit is on. 
and <laughs> the seat belts are frozen. Everything is frozen in here. I'm not gonna floor it or do anything crazy because I really don't wanna push the car too hard. So let's just drive around the parking lot here really quick and see, do we have any regen? I'm full off, no, not even a hint of regen. So the battery pack doesn't want any energy whatsoever. So let's go plug this thing in, this frozen brick of a Model 3, this poor car. Like it's literally iced in here. <laughs> We've had this car in 130 degree weather in Death Valley and minus pretty much 20 degree weather tonight. Minus 25, it's gonna maybe get down to. And the coldest temperatures out there, just a crazy temperature swing. So let's back it up here. I can barely see anything outside of the car, to be honest. So let's back it to this end spot. I think that's going to be our best bet, actually. Yeah. Yeah. This end unit right here. And coming on in, getting it as close as possible. Hopefully it'll reach. I think we're pretty much in the snow thing. So now we see what happens. I have climate control off. Again, I haven't preconditioned it to a supercharger, but I can already hear pumps running in the background. So jump out with me. Let's get this thing plugged in and then we'll run in and look at the data. Wow, you hear how creaky the doors are and stuff? Everything's creaky. Everything's creaky. Oh, okay. oh, that's deep. Sorry for the, the camera work on this one. We're frozen. <laughs> Look at this. And so is that. Oh, 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 this is like an EA cable. And it wants to pop out. I have to keep pressure on it for it to latch. Come on, baby. Actually, I don't know you know what, Alyssa? To... What? I, I think it's frozen. I don't think it's going to latch. Yeah. That is a non-latching situation right All there. Right, we got to move on. Wow, that is a cold one. <laughs> I got to open up the camera because the back window is completely covered here. Let's just brush, off, brush off the backup camera. And here we go over. We'll find another unit to plug into. I think we'll go to this one back here. It doesn't matter that we really have to share stalls, does it? Because I don't expect us to get big power at all. So let's just slide on back into this one right here. Should be no problem at all. Super easy surprised at how many teslas are charging all the way back let's get this one juicing here we go another completely frozen cable ah went in nicely this time wow i feel like i'm gonna get frostbite just touching that thing and so now it's blue orange come on latch wow these things are not latching at all it's just so cold blue come on don't touch it let it communicate will it start charging will it start charging I don't know. Let's see what the car says on the inside. Let's take a look. It's definitely in. Yeah, it's doing something in there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It says supercharging, and this is green. Let's jump in. Let's take a look at how long it takes to start. <laughs> okay. So, right now... Wow, that was really a hard slam for a cold car. I know. It's <laughs> literally like a brick like a brick so we have heated seats on no climate though got Putting dragon breath growing cool. so we're getting five kilowatts right now from the charger but you can see we're getting zero miles an hour plus or minus and that means nothing is going into the battery pack but five kilowatts is going to the battery heating and the way the model 3 heats the battery pack is really super neat it actually runs the front motor and rear motor as waste heat so it runs them inefficiently creating i think up to seven kilowatts three and a half kilowatts each as waste heat and then that'll go into the battery pack but wow this thing is so frozen we've plugged into a supercharger at 35 percent state of charge indicating we're only getting five kilowatts that is amazing and nothing is going into the battery i mean it hasn't even started to charge yet so what time is it now 8 13 we plugged in probably at 8 12 something like that let's see how long it takes until we start getting this mile per hour i hate mile per hour as a metric of speed of charging but it's a good indication to know what's actually when it starts going into the battery pack or when it's just kind of freezing it, or I should say defrosting it. Freezing it? I'm so cold, I can't even think. <laughs> no. Look at this, battery is heating. Charge rate will increase once battery is warm. 
next time navigate to supercharger. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it gives us all of the uh, all the tips. High usage idiot. supercharging station. Nice that Tesla gives you this. Here's six kilowatts going into the heating right now. Zero going into the battery pack. Very nice. Looking very good. Wow, this is freaking awesome. <laughs> Look at this, battery temperature low, charge rate limited by low battery temperature, vehicles improving battery temperature to increase charge rate. Really nice that they give you all this data, really nice. Tesla just does this stuff better than anyone. Pretty interesting that that cable on the end though was so icy I couldn't even get it to plug in. And this one yeah. was a little crunchy going in. I wonder if it's just the happens of people using them and that one just hasn't been used well, we, since this whole uh, freezing state no they all have been used because i've uh, been here and they've all been used okay uh, but remember today we drove by and you saw them sitting in the snow yeah i think they kind of froze a little bit in there yeah so um yeah well, let's sit here let's wait with the heated seats on and let's see how long it takes till it starts putting energy into the we've been sitting here in the toasty warm rivian waiting for the uh, tesla just as a fun experiment of course and uh, Alyssa mentioned it went up a percent but we haven't added anything to the battery pack so can you guess as to why uh well i remember that it lost percentage overnight so it's actually just gaining <laughs> you're close you're really close I, you did mention it and you said it but it just went <laughs> so remember that blue section of the battery yeah where it you know basically limits like that part the, like the buffer yeah it yeah. basically says hey i'm gonna need this much to heat up okay. uh, as it's warming up the battery you'll actually start to gain that back and the displayed state of charge here is after the the cold section has taken over so it, the actual state of charge of the battery hasn't increased it's just a software thing that says, hey, I'm warming up, so I need so less what, buffer. What was it at? 36%. It has now been a full half hour and no energy has started to been added to the battery pack as of yet. Uh, two kilowatt hours have been delivered from the charger to the car. The supercharger is pretty much all but emptied out at the moment. And um, that's just so interesting to me. I didn't think it was going to take a half hour to start charging this is super cool it really shows you the importance of on route battery preconditioning a little tip for a lot of new electric car owners or for people who may watch this video and think hey why is it taking so long for this car to charge this is a very extreme case something you'd never run into really in the real world i'm just doing a test uh for those who might be considering an electric car i don't want to paint the picture that they're all perfect but certainly with a car like this you put in a trip the car will automatically run the heater on the way to the charger. You plug in, you charge for 15 minutes and you go. Even in cold weather, you can see the station's empty by now. Everyone got in and out and superchargers, people are always in and out in waves, of course. So it'll be really interesting to see how long it'll take before it even starts accepting a charge, but just ripping seven kilowatts on the battery heater. And uh, yeah, no idea how long it'll take, maybe an hour, we'll see. And Alyssa, you just popped out, we're chatting with one of our viewers who has the Model X here. He's like, I can't even make a round trip to Livermore to Fort Collins and back oh, really? in this cold. Yeah, very bad efficiency, but oh, yeah. super nice guy. And so it just started charging. Yeah, 848. 23 kilowatts, very interesting that it just went from zero and then gave it 20 kilowatts. It didn't give it like eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Mm -hmm. It just went, here you go. The thing with that is I've noticed the same on Regen. Mm -hmm. Regen just cuts everything no regen just the car free rolls in the morning yeah. and then it gives me boom a big brick of of power mm -hmm. let's jump in and see how it's doing very interesting so there we go charging up 26 kilowatts and uh, the battery still got the snowflake interestingly so it took about four kilowatt hours of waste heat to start this thing uh, to get charging. Very, very cool. Yeah, the guy in the Model X, I think it was Jason, super nice guy. He was really curious to see how long it was going to take, but that's actually not as long as I thought. After we, it was a half hour, I'm like, oh, it's going to be another hour. Yeah, I think, I mean, we'll calculate the time, but I, I, roughly around 45 minutes. 45 minutes, something like that, yeah. to start charging slowly. I don't know. Slowly. So I guess let's charge it up to 90% and see how long it takes from here. And uh, I feel like a lot of Tesla owners, especially new owners, seem to be supercharging their cars to 90%. This is obviously a degraded battery pack, a little bit smaller than the new cars, but let's just see how long it takes to get up to 90 and then we'll go run more experiments with it. I'm hopping back in the Rivian though. Yeah, and we can go into uh, Tesla Fi and analyze the full charge curve here so I don't need to analyze it in the car. No need. It's freezing and I wanna keep the climate <laughs> control off for, sci for science. 
<laughs> Let's go back to the Rivian. Look how, hear how creaky this is? Wow, even the creaks on the side. <laughs> Crazy. Now, just about an hour and 10 minutes into the charging session, maybe a little bit longer than that, hour 15, somewhere around there. We are at 70% state of charge. The blue snowflake has gone away, so that is a true 70% state of charge, and it's doing about 51, 52 kilowatts, which is not far off what it would normally do. Typically, we uh, taper on a perfectly normal charging curve down to 50 kilowatts by the time we hit about 80% state of charge. So. It definitely warmed itself pretty good throughout this. Again, it's only getting colder outside. It's uh, about minus 16 degrees Fahrenheit, according to the watch on my wrist here. Just insanely cold and uh, very impressed with how quickly this thing can heat up the battery pack. There's one last note I wanted to make about this battery heating, which is you can only charge as fast as your coldest item, so or your coldest part of your pack. When we're on track, when we're doing a lot of DC charging, we always talk about something called hot spotting the battery pack. And, and technically, you really can't cool every bit of the battery pack, nor can you have sensors in every part of the battery pack. So there's a lot of computer modeling going on as to what the temperature actually is in the battery. That's a little bit scary because you gotta really make sure those models are perfect so you don't overheat or, or let your car charge with a battery too cold and tesla is probably better at monitoring and modeling all of these things more than almost anyone else it's pretty insane how really hardcore they push it to the limits here compared to any other automaker and guess what they do it with very high reliability it's impressive but um you know something we don't really think about is cold spotting the heater can't touch every single cell every single bit of the battery pack nor can it warm up every side of every cell so there's a lot of modeling going on here. The computers are doing a lot of work to figure out what's the coldest part of the battery pack and what's that maximum power that we can put in for that coldest temperature because you're only as strong as your weakest link. Something like that at least is the saying. <laughs> so we're pretty close to 90%. We'll let it keep going and then we'll go home and analyze the full data. Hope you're enjoying this. I'm absolutely loving it. We are nearing the end of our charge as the Tesla T starts to pulse slower. It means we are getting close to finishing up. And there we are, 89% state of charge. Wow, super cold in here, kept climbing off. Heated seats actually stayed off, so they're just kicking themselves back on. But since just one person will be driving, we'll do that. Added 37 kilowatt hours. Uh, again, that's from the charger into the battery pack. We'll have to look to see how much in Teslafy it thinks it used to warm the battery. Interesting, the temperature here, one charging, has increased significantly. It's way under one degree Fahrenheit ambient way under it is a ice cube in this car so come on baby just a couple more seconds left there we go charging complete unable to charge disconnect and retry well that makes sense because we've completed charging um okay next time navigate to the supercharger battery will precondition for faster charging all right well let's um uh, juice this thing up i'm gonna go high heat because screw it and we're about to do some more experiments. Actually, interestingly, it went red. It didn't like complete and say all was good. Don't know what's up with that. <laughs> go cold, the cable is totally insane. So off we go to uh, Colton's shop. We're gonna run some more experiments. Let me see what Alyssa wants to do, which one she wants to drive. But either way, I'll see you back at home and we'll analyze the data from this super fun experiment. Very interestingly, we actually have no power limit on regen or acceleration this thing's ready to rip the motors are probably really toasty after running um waste heat for that long let's i don't have must scan my tesla in i lost actually my adapter for it sadly let and i'll have to get a new one what am i trying to do this one track mode let's see the motor's hot yeah look at that the motors got toasty in the rear burning off all that waste heat that's funny i figured that would be the case let's turn off track mode back to drive <laughs> which you can barely see anything out of it let's put on the rear defrost okay let's rock and roll there we just left the supercharger and you can see minus 14 degrees fahrenheit there super duper chilly minus 15 it's just going down and down as we're driving wow these are not easy conditions for this car to perform in and i gotta say that took a while yes but also that's a lot of thermal mass that you have to heat up. So overall, pretty impressive. 
Then of course you can just send a Model 3 wherever you want, so easy. Love to have track mode if you wanna have some fun. Man, I love this car. So there you go, the Model 3 deep freeze experiment. I know that this is, some people will take this video and be like, oh, Teslas won't charge in the cold. And unfortunately, there's really no way around it. For our expert users, most of you guys, you'll understand like, hey, if you're on a road trip and you precondition your car to a supercharger, it's no problem at all. It's all vertically integrated, works great. Um, again, I left the car at the charger for two days to turn into an ice cube, two full days and then plug it straight into fast charging just to see what would happen. That pretty much will never happen in the real world. I'm sure there's a few cases where it will. The car can easily handle it. You just have to wait for it to juice up a little bit. Uh, and again, it's always proof if you're on a road trip and it's really cold, charge up the night before if you wanna wake up and go. Actually, what I do on road trips typically is leave the car at about 40, 50% state of charge. And then uh, in the morning before I get up and shower, I run out in my underwear. I really don't, but that'd be kind of funny. Uh, plug in the car to a supercharger. It runs the battery heating, gets it up to 90, 95%. It doesn't sit at high state of charge and everything's nice and warm for a very efficient stretch on the next leg. It's, it works out really well. I do that very, very often on road trips that have superchargers at hotels. So there you go. Thanks for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. I thought this was fascinating. Would be really curious to see how other cars handle this type of logic. So I'm actually doing one with a Nissan Leaf, uh, two Nissan Leafs, one broke. <laughs> That's an upcoming video. We also have Model 3 uh, heater race, PTC versus heat pump coming up in the next couple days. We did a lot of cold weather testing. So thanks so much for watching. See you in another one soon. Bye-bye.